forward. Okay, we've got the recording started. Woo awesome, awesome. Okay, so, woo, red hot. I love this. Red hot, baby. We woo, have, like, go red. I know the company had like a red hot song. We need to find it or something to be able to like play that. But, yeah. um, but I know, I think Maya, Heidi, and I are all like super excited about this one in particular because just in conversations, like from what Maya has shared with us, like we know that it's relevant both for you, Jennifer, and then for Melanie as well. Um, and I always go back to, so Jan Thetford is a national sales director with Mary Kay. She's mm -hmm. um, located in Lubbock, Texas, and she's one of Linda's like BFF kind of people. And one of the things that Jan has always taught us is you teach from your last seven days. And so as Maya, Heidi, and I were preparing for this, we like, we kind of just went to the conversation that the three of us have been having since we were together for leadership. Um, and I just think that that makes it to where, you know, again, it's something that we are continuing to work through and, mm -hmm. you know, progress through, I guess. And it's one of those things we're, we're going to be kind of talking about like scheduling, time management, um, prioritizing, like all of those things. And I think that I know sometimes that can be really frustrating, you know, when you're at that point of like, man, and I think even Maya had said this, like, I should have this figured out. Like, why am I having to go through this? But as our life changes and as our seasons change and our positions change, like there's always that adjustment to it. Like even when you're a mom and you have your first baby and you get everything all figured out and then you have the second baby and you're like, I've done this before. Like I should know how to do this. It's not the same, you know? Yeah. And so as you, you know, again, everybody's life has changed within this last year. And again, as you're moving and growing and adjusting and things, you've got to revisit that. And so I think being able to um, be aware of that and to have those skills and just that knowledge that, okay, this is going to be something I'm going to have to continue to do pretty much for the rest of my life. And it's really, um, I actually found, and Maya and Heidi, I hadn't told you this. So one of the things I had listened to this week, I thought it was very interesting because, you know, we always talk about like work-life balance or work-life harmony and, you know, how do you, how do you juggle the two or anything like that? And this perspective just really kind of gave me a shift that it's like, you really cannot, you really can't separate the two. And what I mean by that is it's your life. It's only one life. You don't have a work life and you don't have a personal life. You have a life. And so uh -huh. there's going to, there will be that harmony or that marriage between the two but this is going to play into no matter whether you're working another job outside of Mary Kay, whether you're doing Mary Kay, whether you're just living your life, it's your life. You know what I mean? And so to really try to think about, um, you know, I mean, it is still that harmony of the two, but instead of trying to look at like, I need to figure this out for this and I need to figure this out for this aspect you know, getting it figured out for life in general, you know, to make it to where you are living your best life, that you are um, being able to do what, what you're called to do, you know, serving people, having a heart for people, um, being with your family, like all of those things, and just kind of being able to prioritize and plan, I think is probably the biggest part of it, so that there isn't that sense of frustration. There isn't that sense of overwhelm. There isn't, you know, any of that chaos kind of feeling that I don't know about you, but I can definitely feel, you know, feel at certain times in my life. So that's kind of what we're talking about. And so um, I know that, that Maya asked both Melanie and you, Jennifer, you know, kind of what, what is it in regard, like when we say schedule or we talk about that, what is, where is that sense of frustration? Where's that kind of stress point? Um, what is the thing that you feel like is your, that is going well in regards to that area? And what do you feel is, is that kind of point where, okay, I need to work on this to help make this a little bit easier. So Jennifer, would you mind kind of sharing that a little bit as far as your perspective 
um, of kind of what your thoughts are on that? Yeah, I think it has to go back with the finding an assistant. And I had talked to Maya and I actually reached out to my friend who I was hoping would be one, but she had a sledding accident and is in a back brace for eight weeks. Ooh. So she's going to be fine, like no surgery or anything, but I, I know I need an assistant. So I'm just been asking people trying to find one um, because I feel like I get most frustrated when stuff outside of Mary Kay, like life, kids, whatever happens. And then I'm not able to get the things done that I wanted to get done or know I need to get done. And I have found myself Sundays, like, so I have my top, like my six things to do list, mm -hmm. but I've not always been very good about prioritizing which one needs to happen first. And so I've tried to be more intentional about that this last week. Um, especially like we all know it's not always as fun to make follow-up messages, calls, bookings, whatever. But honestly, like that's the most important thing. And that should be other than like my new recruits and getting their grand opening scheduled this week and prepping them. Like, I feel like that should be like my next like top thing. And so I don't know if that really fully answered your question or not. But. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so hold on. I had a thought. So <laughs> let me write it down before I forget. Um, so here's, and that kind of went along like that answer, that answer doesn't surprise. I don't think any of us, because I think that that is truly where, I mean, cause like you said, it, sometimes it's, what's, what is the saying? It's the things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. And so it's easy to do, and we know we should do follow-up calls or things like that, but it's also easy not to do them because we might do something else that doesn't require as much energy, you know, different things like that. So we've kind of got a couple different thoughts and a couple different things prepared. So I know that Maya had, she kind of put together a list of, um, I think 10 kind of recommendations um, as far as in regards to time and to scheduling. Um, and then I'm also have something that I want to share that has kind of been, it's been very interesting because it's kind of come into two different, through two, two different avenues into my brain <laughs> this week um, that has been very helpful as well, as far as a like framework when you're looking at the things to do as well. So hopefully between those two things and just our conversation, um, it'll be very helpful in in providing you some guidance on that and of course then we're all going to kind of chime in in regards to that as well so Maya do you want to go mm -hmm. ahead and share your things first yes I'm very excited about this um and like Mary said this is something that's all been like really heavy on our hearts and I mm -hmm. think like there's a reason and because I believe any type of growth comes through reevaluating how we're spending our time you know have you ever heard that whole phrase of saying like show me how you spend your time and I'll show you what you care about. Mm -hmm. Show me how you spend your money and I'll show you your priorities. I feel like it's the same thing. And so I have a few different things to think about when it comes to time. I think that's the best way to put it is what to think about um, when I'm aligning and creating and planning a schedule. Number one, plan to plan. <laughs> Um, I think sometimes we underestimate the power of actually scheduling time in our schedule to plan the rest of it. Yes. So um, not negating that planning is a part of our work. And I think Mary's will talk about what's important and urgent, not important and everything. But I think if we can't plan, we can't work on what is urgent, right? Like if you don't have a plan in place, you can't put whatever is at the top of the to-do list because you don't have a plan. And so you have to plan to plan. And this, I think I refused to do for the longest time because it didn't feel like work or it didn't look like work that was going to be, um, there wasn't going to be a direct income, like a, a, a direct result right away. Right. However, but it affected the rest of my results. Number two, does my schedule align with my walk with the Lord? If we are a company that believes putting God first, am I planning in my scheduled time that allows me to do that? Number three, are you and your husband communicating about your schedule and your family priorities? I had someone tell me a long time ago, 
like, what does Jordan think about this? And I was like, oh, this is totally fine. And then she was like, then why are you overthinking it? If it aligns with what you and Jordan are doing, it doesn't need to align with anybody else. Because if I have already put God at the beginning and I've communicated with my husband and this aligns for us in this season, I don't need to feel guilty or bad or feel this pressure to change it or whatever the case may be. But also to ask the question, when my husband comes to me and says, oh, you're working again, I return and say, did the goal change? Did I misunderstand something? Did I not did, are we not on the same page? And you know what's crazy? He now never, I mean, he knows when my schedule is, he gets it. He has given me tips of how to be more efficient with my schedule. And we have um, a very special time for just the two of us. And everybody knows Friday is Jordan and I's time. And I think by honoring that, it allows me to work on my Mary Kay in other seasons or in times that allows him and I to stay on the same page. Number four, does this schedule support the goal that I'm working on? Because if it doesn't, two things, something has to change. Either the goal has to change or my schedule has to change. And is changing the goal bad? No. But if I proclaim one goal and my schedule doesn't align, I'm shooting myself in the foot. And therefore, I'm also shooting my confidence, my belief. And I believe if I'm doing that, I'm robbing other people of finishing that goal when I said I would. Right? I'm robbing other people also of finishing that goal when I said I would. Number four, does this bring me joy or make me income? This is a huge power of delegation, and I know we all get this, and I know we all understand this. However, I believe if I cannot put it in one of these two categories, then it is a clear telltale sign that I need to delegate it. It's a, I need to hire it out. I need to delegate it. I need to ask somebody to do it, um, put the system in that which it does. Number six, what works for someone else? may not work for me. And what works for me may not work for someone else. That doesn't mean that either of them are wrong. Let me give you an example. One of my dear friends, Amanda Wright, is also another top director. She also has kids the same age as Kate and Kenna. And Amanda, she has full Mary, she works three full Mary Kay days a week. And when I mean full, she I think works probably like 10 hour days. So she works three 10 hour days where her kids are in preschool, she has childcare, but she doesn't see her kids all day. But then the other two days of a week, she is with her kids all day. Granted, her, I think only one of them is in like half day kindergarten. So, but that is the day they do parties and adventures and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And I remember thinking the thought, oh my gosh, I'm a horrible mom to my two toddler children because I am not spending that time with them. And then I realized, wait, 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 that's not true. I work in smaller amounts of time every day, as opposed to three 10 hour long days of not seeing mm -hmm. my children. And it finally dawned on me, wow, I am spending time with my kids, but I also have another third child that I can't just go traipsing around Kansas city to do all these activities. That's just not the season I'm in right now. So I had to realize, although I was learning from her, what she was doing was not going to work for me and my kids' schedule and us, but both of them are great ways to work. Both And that works for her, works for them. Her, her husband's job is different than Jordan's job. And I just had to realize both of those ways are successful. Neither one of them are wrong. I love that I have lunch every day with my kids. I love every day I do snack time with my kids. I love that I, I just, I love having those small pockets of moments. Okay, number seven was changing the verbiage about my Mary Kay business. Mommy isn't doing Mary Kay, mommy is working. I didn't want my kids to be angry that mommy was doing Mary Kay and associate Mary Kay with mom being gone. I wanted my kids to realize I have a job and my job pays bills. My job contributes to their toys. 
my job contributes to them having food on the table. And so I wanted them to associate work because it is work. And although it's fun and it's exciting and it's, it's, it's bubbly and it's, I love it. And there's a lot of energy beside it. I, I knew that they would understand that. And so I changed the verbiage of mommy's doing Mary Kay to mommy's going to work. So therefore they understood it. Everyone understood it. And I feel like, especially now when the kids are old enough to get it, they say, okay, mom, how many more parties are you doing today? And I could say two or three, or how many more phone calls do you have? I've got three phone calls and then I'm done. Mommy's done with work. Number eight. So then I had a follow-up question is what would you like to do when mom is done with work today? Because then there was excitement and anticipation when I got my work done. And I also noticed that when they knew that I was going to be fully attentive and supportive and there and present with them, they're almost like, okay, can you get it done? <laughs> can you go get your work done? And I, and then to follow through, if they told me they wanted me to play Barbies, I'm on my knees playing Barbies. If they wanted me to color yesterday, I painted like, I colored like three coloring pages and I read a lot of books and, but that's what Kenna wanted me to do when I was done with my work. And I also want to be a woman of my word, not just with my business, but also to my children, right? And to be able to follow through when I say I'm done, I'm done. Can I add one thing on that oh, one? Yes. So the thought that almost immediately came to my mind when you said that, Maya, is, okay, so what if we're talking about somebody that maybe doesn't have like smaller kids, you know what I mean, that may not be in that, but it's even like, what do you want to do when you're done with work? Like, what is your, you know, what, I mean, kind of like your reward for if you do the things, you know, that you said you were going to do, what can you do to fill your cup, you know? I mean, Jennifer, I know right now you are in the season with younger kids, but my thought was like, okay, well, you know, my kids are older, Heidi's kids are older, somebody else's kids are older. What is it that they can do that it's like, okay, well, what, what do you want to do with your husband when you're done working? What do you do want, want to do for yourself when you're done working? So you can apply that to lots of different things, but that concept of when this is done, you know, what's the fun that I get to do after that aspect? So. So I guess if you're number seven, you could say, um, instead of saying mommy needs to work, you could say I'm working. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it truly is. Cause I mean, that was the thought that, I mean, I almost kind of interjected, but you did kind of answer that is that I think we kind of tend to say, well, you know, I'm going to a party, like I'm going to do this. And it's most people don't think of parties <laughs> the way we think, you know what I mean? Like parties are, which granted our Mary Kay parties are fun, but the, you know, society thinks of a party as an entertainment kind of thing, not a work thing. Right. So right. to be able to, you know, keep it under that umbrella of, you know, I'm working, mom's working, you know, whatever, even like, I mean, even I've had to do that, like the, even this week I had to do that with my mom <laughs> that, you know, she last minute wanted me to do something. And I said, mom, I can't do that until Friday because Thursday I'm work like I'm having to work because of things that had gotten changed because of the weather and all that kind of stuff. And that it was like, I can't, like, I have to work that day, you know? And so I, I mean, you kind of can apply that to all, <laughs> all different kind of scenarios in your life. Right. And I think that's so true is people don't see what we do as a work mm -hmm. because it is fun. And so I really know. And it's flexible. You know what I mean? So then they're like, oh, they she can work that. whenever. She can work yeah. wherever that, you yeah. know. So I even had to do that with my friends of like, I'm yeah. working. I, I, I cannot go to lunch. I can't hang out. I, I need yeah. to work. Or yeah. I will like text and say, I'll call you back when I'm done working. Yeah. Um, and that's something else I had to do with my mother. I was like, mom, I cannot pick up every time you call me. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. I have to work. Yeah. So, I love that. Okay. Number nine. There is no such thing as a Mary Kay emergency. The new recruit will still be there. The customer will survive. There's no such thing as a Mary Kay emergency. I know that setting boundaries for the sake of my health, my mental health, my relationship, I cannot be accessible 24 seven. And I'm not even gonna apologize for it. It's why I am very selective about 
the times that I do pick up my phone. It's why I leave my phone in my room or I intentionally leave it at home because I don't even want the temptation to have to pick it up. And of course, when your kids are now also old enough to say, mom, put your phone down. Okay. Yeah. You know, that's clearly a signal that I don't want them to look at me and think, oh, she's always doing that. So there's no such thing as a Mary Kay emergency, but I also want to tag on that. I don't have to apologize for taking 24 hours to get back to someone. I can Mm -hmm. say, thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm. Thank you for waiting. Cause I want to affirm that as well. But I also had someone tell me, I could never do what you do because you always respond really quickly. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ooh. And let me also say this. I noticed that top directors respond very quickly. So therefore I began to get into my image or this head that if I didn't respond, I could never become a top sales director. Mm -hmm. Well, fool on me because those top directors I don't want to be a top director like that. I want to be a top director that's present to my family. And when I started asking other top leaders and directors about what they did, they were very guarded about when they would and wouldn't answer their phone. Mm -hmm. And the women that we lead are adult women. They can find the answer. They can go to Mm InTouch. They can go to Facebook. I don't need to reply to every question that they do every single time. There's no such thing as a Mary Kay emergency. And sometimes I intentionally don't answer a question because I want them to take the initiative to go and find the answer. Well, and I've even had it to her. I have responded and they're like, oh yeah, I figured it out. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You know, like if I, you know, waited to respond, you know, or they'll come Mm -hmm. back and say, oh, never mind. I figured out I went to in touch. Well, you know, but I think that's how we're programmed. You know, we're programmed to try to find I mean that's how our brain works we're trying to find the easy you know easy answer that that's what we do we if we can find it faster from somebody else we do that instead of trying to do the work ourselves so yeah and you know I'm going to add something into this can you guys hear me I have my headphones on okay Mm -hmm. um so you know I think last summer I kind of went through that with my unit and I I actually just went on their our little group and just said you know I'm teaching you how to fish (laughs) <laughs> because, you know, by me answering every question is not helping you and, um, it's enabling you to stay where you are. And, you know, mm-hmm. and that's not my job as my job is to raise leaders of leaders. And so, um, yeah, when you're new, that's a little different, but when, even when you're new, I've got some of my new people, I don't even have to hardly help at all. You know, it depends on their personality and their, mm-hmm. how much they can, you know, find resolve their own resolve. But so just think that thought too. It's not that you're abandoning them, abandoning them, because my my unit would not say that about me. <clears throat> it's that I'm teaching them to be strong, and I know that whatever amount of energy and time I give now, if I want to grow double and triple in size, mm-hmm. I need to be able to have that scalable. And so mm-hmm. if I have everybody depending on me 24 seven, like Maya says, then you can't grow because it's going to hold you back mentally. Like, how am I going to manage this group when it gets to 50, a hundred, 200 unit members? And, okay. So that gives you freedom. So it doesn't bog you down. It doesn't bog yeah. you down. You know, it's, it's not my responsibility to respond to everything immediately. Right. It right. really is kind of like your kids. You know what I mean? Whether it's like your customers or your consultants, is okay would I when I'm looking at my children do I want to constantly give them the answer or do I want to teach them how to figure out the answer Mm -hmm. you know and it's that same and I know that sounds kind of silly but it's that same concept of instead of I mean like I legit have a text on my phone from a consultant that came in just before we started that wants to know what products not to use with using clinical solutions you know (laughs) So it's like, okay, yes, I could text her the chart because I know I have it saved on my phone, but I can also respond and say, if you go to InTouch under product central, there is a whole section on clinical solutions. You know what I mean? So that it's like, I'm not answering, I am answering their question, but I'm showing them where to go so that when they continue to have questions, they know where to be able to go find it, Mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, I think back to, you know, well, kids or husbands where it's like, well, where's this at? Well, did you look here? Did you look here? Did you look here? You know, we gotta, we gotta kind of help them prod them along to figure out where those things are. No, true. No, true. Okay. The next one, number 10, 
if your current schedule isn't supporting your goal, what needs to change? Number 11, when you say yes to one thing in your schedule, you're saying no to another. If I'm being super transparent and super honest, um, last year when we stepped down from our pink Cadillac, it was amazing the amount of things that I started volunteering for, I started doing, I started saying yes to, because I, now looking back, subconsciously wanted to be able to fill my calendar with all these things I was doing so I could justify not being in my pink Cadillac. And it showed. It, I was miserable. I was saying yes to all these things. And while those, some of those things were really good things to do, none mm -hmm. of them were bad things. Right. They were not what I was supposed to be doing. And I knew it. And my husband knew it too. And he, like, he was like, I don't understand what in the world you're doing. And it just made me realize that while all of those things, like I said, were really good things, it was not what God was calling me to do. And yet, this morning, as I got up, I saw this thing on Instagram and it talked about success. Um, when you, when God calls you to do something, it doesn't mean that you're going to be successful. He's calling you to be obedient. Mm -hmm. And then based on your obedience, God will in time bring the harvest. And it was like, whoo, yep. that is like really powerful. He's not calling me to whatever, to being a leader in this company to be successful. He's calling me to be obedient and faith of mentoring and pouring into loving, teaching, leading and loving sometimes when it hurts and it's, but all worth it. And so it just made me realize when you say yes to one thing, you're saying no to something else. Well, and I think in regards to that, and especially Maya, thank you for that transparency with that, because I think, especially for like, I mean, when you're on this call, when you're in the position of red jacket, you love that challenge. You love that, that leadership aspect. So it's like, okay, if I'm not, if I feel like I'm not succeeding well or leading well here, I'm going to go someplace that does fill that need. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, let me go here because I can be really good at that too. You can be good at all of those things, but you're being, when you're being good over here. And like Maya said, it's not that it's a bad thing. It's not that it's not serving a purpose or, you know, you know, anything like that, but it's, is that, is, you know, really looking at it like, okay, is this in this season, is this what I need to be doing? Or do I need to go back and focus on this, even though this is a little bit harder, if that makes sense, yeah. you know, but we're going to, we want to fill our, our cup and our, you know, right. that challenge kind of aspect, that leadership kind of aspect somewhere. We just have to figure out which is the best part for us. If, if that kind my, of makes last, sense. my last tip is implementing a day of rest and recharge. As leaders who pour and we pour and we pour and we pour, we, we do, we love on people hard. We love on, we talk a lot. We listen a lot. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely crucial and not only crucial, but it's biblical. It's biblical that we take a day of Sabbath. And I think this is something also too, that I'm learning a lot in a season is my Sabbath is to honor the Lord. My Sabbath is not to just like be in my sweats and eat chocolate. My, sa my Sabbath is a day meant to restore my heart and my soul to ask for forgiveness and wisdom. And not that we can't do that during the week, but how much more rested and recharged would you go about the rest of your week? If you had a day where you didn't open in touch, when you didn't mm -hmm. open Facebook, when you didn't open Instagram, like to a whole nother level, and you got to fill that day with things that really did recharge you right. and really did just bring so much peace to you. And it's actually one of the things, like I said, I was just really convicted on this last week and I was having a conversation with Jordan and he looked at me and he said, I've been trying to tell you this for years <laughs> because when you work all the time, nobody wants that job. Yeah. You make it look un, you make it look impossible to achieve what you've achieved. Right. Whereas I pray and hope Jennifer and Heidi that like mentoring you, I, do you remember when you went to DIQ and I, you, um, you were in DIQ and you're like, I've got to go on this trip for spring break. And I was like, then go, 
then go yeah. on this. You're, Mary Kay will still be here when you get back. And I, I remember that conversation immediately as I was being told this. And I was like, man, but it's been a long time since I've mm-hmm. lived that out. Right. And, but I also look at that season of life and my time with the Lord was so much more than what it has been. And I think part mm-hmm. of coming out of like, um, just the mental season that I've come, come at, coming out of and the grief that we're all coming out of, we're all right. experiencing, but we've, I think I, I personally had negated really taking the time to refill my soul and to not justify it or find a reason for it, but just that it's what God has called me to do is to rest and recharge and to get a get away. I mean, we see all the leaders of the Bible would get away and spend time in that. And so anyway, that's my last tip for creating, creating a schedule that really can just be beautiful and Mm -hmm. wonderful. And you can still achieve and love and serve and be present to things that are important to you. So that's, um, you all know if I got up early, um, it, and I did, I got up at like six 30 today and I couldn't sleep and I just, um, yeah. So that's, I wrote all that down. There we go. There you, woo. I love that. I love that. <laughs> and I think it's, I mean, looking back over that list, I mean, I really think that there is a lot of, um, a lot of reflection and a lot of communication mm-hmm. that are a part of that, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, I think that it does tie into as far as, okay, what is it that, what is it that the Lord is calling me to do? What is my, what is my purpose? What am I supposed, you know, where, what is the direction that he's leading me in? And then, you know, being kind of convicted and, and passionate about that and communicating that with others, you know, whether that is your husband, your family, your friends, you know, any of the, like your team, any of those kind of things. Um, I mean, but it really is, I mean, I love that all of those are, they're simple and complex at the same time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're simple to implement, but they do have like big value to those things. Mm -hmm. So Jennifer, we're kind of going to pause here for just a second. So what are, what are your thoughts with this? What are your takeaways? What kind of spoke to you? Um, before we go on to the next thing. Okay. Um, well, I loved all of it. So thank you, Maya. Um, I think, I mean, it kind of re, like it affirms some of what like I'm already doing as far as the communicating with my husband, mostly with my husband. Um, and so just remembering that communication is very important. Um, and I don't have a lot of that team aspect, Heidi, that you were talking about of them like asking, but I mean, I have a couple, but I mean, I only, I only have nine right now. So like my team isn't quite as big, but like knowing that for the future and like how to guard against that um, yes. was really helpful. And then even like, just when you're saying yes to one thing, you're saying no to something else, whether that's in your business or something outside of your business. Mm-hmm. And one of those things, for example, um, there's a local children's consignment sale that I'm on the leadership team for and I help at, and they do two sales a year. I was just told that the next sale is most likely going to be the last week of March. And I'm going to tell them no, because Mm -hmm. if I'm trying to finish my car end of March, there is no way I can be working there, you know, six hours a day, four days a week or something. Like it's just not going to work this time. And I'm not like going to be kicked off for any, like for not doing it. Um, but like, this will be the first time I've told them no, since I've had kids. So, yeah. But that's, Can awesome I say, that you, recognize yeah. that, you know, yeah. like, and yeah. just, you know, and again, it's when, when somebody else spring, not that they, I mean, but that is kind of springing on. I mean, that's not for as big of a sale as those things are, Jennifer, mm-hmm. you know, that it's like, okay, we're, you know, you're talking about a month away that, like that is kind of bringing it on you in a way. You know what I mean? That if you've mm-hmm. got this, I mean, it's not like you are just like, oh, I can't do it because of, you know what I mean? Like just, I don't know, that conviction mm-hmm. and just being on purpose yeah. with that. that yeah. yeah. I wanted to share, Jennifer, I think, do you have the loyalty part as well? Is that right? Are you, Maya, would you agree? Is she more loyal? A hundred percent. Okay. 
So no, that is, so your new affirmation is I am good at saying no. I'm going to be the master at saying no. You're going to experience freedom from that because loyal people feel like they have to say yes to everything. And when you say yes to everything, it dilute, dilutes your powerfulness. It distracts and it gets you off focus. And so the, trust me, cause I know that cause wonder woman does not exist. <laughs> you are not her and saying no is very powerful. It's because it, um, allows you to, um, you know, concentrate in the areas that you need to, and it's not being mean. Actually, it's, it's very helpful because it's, it's very liberating. It shows others that, you know, where you're going, you have a sense of direction, you know, what mm -hmm. to fill your time with, what to say no to, and then people will start to respect you in a whole new level. Um, so loyal people have a hard time with saying no, but no is very liberating. Okay. So I just wanted to say that. And the other thing I want to say early when you first uh, spoke, um, you have to know that you're already getting good at time management. You're doing it now. You're in the process. You're growing. And you cannot compare yourself to other people because our, your life and what you say no to, you're saying yes to something really powerful. You're mm -hmm. creating a, um, a life that most people don't get to create. So, um, so saying no is good because you're saying yes to those opportunities, things that most people don't even have a chance of doing. And um, so, but I wanted to say, give yourself grace. You are already getting good at time management. It will always, all this will be fluid. So it's not black and white. It will be fluid throughout the seasons of your life. And even, you know, the months and, and the changes of the career path level, it will be fluid and you'll just readjust. So know that you are, you are in the process of growing. So give yourself some credit that way you don't feel, um, because I don't want the negative thought saying you're not good at this because you are already good at this. You're better than probably most of the people, Mary Kay women, I you know, our lives look so different and people say, how do you do what you do? Like people at my regular job, it's because of Mary Kay. I've mm -hmm. learned how to do time. I know how to think. I know what to say yes to, what to say no to, how to delegate. Most people can't even, can't even articulate those things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're way above the rest. So it's okay that you don't think like them and that you have to be okay with that. You're not called to think that way. Yep. That's a good line. You are not called to think that way. Yeah. Huh. That is awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. I just know how loyal people are and <laughs> what we yes. struggle with. <laughs> I got to write that down. I do too. That was so good. And every time I write your name, Heidi, I have to be like, okay, Kari spells it Ray R. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So to give you a good chuckle, you know how I said that that consultant had sent me a text. So at 9.39, they sent me a text asking that question. At 9.49, exactly 10 minutes later, they sent me a text, never mind, I found it. Boom. So <laughs> there you go, baby. here's your funny for the day. So, okay. So the next thing that we want to kind of talk about is kind of a as you're looking at all the things that are coming at you, um, all the things to do, you know, personal business, um, building your team, working towards the goal, family stuff, like all, all the things coming together is how, how can you look at those and figure out, like you, you mentioned earlier, Jennifer, what's priority, what's mm -hmm. not, um, in order to make sure that your six most important things list are the things that are moving you forward. And one of the, um, one of the terms that I've, I've heard recently that kind of really does um, resonate with me, so I don't know if it will resonate with you, is the term like needle moving. So like, what are the things that I have on my list that are going to move the needle forward, okay? And so mm -hmm. the, <laughs> The image that just came to my mind is you in a car driving, okay? And so you're thinking about taking off. You're thinking about pushing on the gas. Your car could be the cleanest car. Like it could have the best smelling air freshener. It could have the coolest little steering wheel cover. It could have the best music playing. But unless you're actually doing the activity of pushing on the gas pedal, it is not going to move forward. So just thinking that thought of, okay, when I'm looking at my list, what are the things that are on there that move that needle forward? And 
one of the things that has been so empowering to me is with some of the things, because this, Jennifer, I will be honest, this is an area, um, and Melanie, as you're watching this replay of this, like this is an area that like I know for me personally, I do have to get more disciplined in. Um, and I think I told my aunt Heidi, some of that is with the season that I've, I'm coming out of with the demands on my time for family and different things like that, this was an area that got hit really hard. And so it is kind of like I'm having to rebuild that structure and that discipline in regards to my time. Um, that sometimes, you know, when you're kind of having to relearn something and adjust something, sometimes it does feel really hard. And so again, this, what I'm going to talk about today, actually, I heard from both something inside Mary Kay and outside Mary Kay. And I've been really praying for help on the discipline and scheduling aspect. So God is doing really well to making sure I get it from both aspects, <laughs> you know, that my stubborn head can get it. Um, but just to think that thought of, of moving the needle forward. So that to me, like I said, has just kind of resonated that as you're looking at things that it's like, okay, is this moving the needle forward? But one of the things I loved that Maya had on her list, um, I don't remember which, which number it was. Oh, number two, um, does my schedule all align with my walk with the Lord is that that honestly is a needle moving activity, you know, like yeah. that is something, if it's not in your, like when you're looking at your six most important things list, if that, um, if that habit of time with the Lord daily is not part of your like automatic day routine, you know, there's some things that you do every day that you don't even think about doing it. Like you just do it. Mm -hmm. If that's not a part of that, then that is a needle moving activity because when you do that for yourself, it will move the needle forward because you will be growing, you will be coming better, you will be more clear and more, um, more, I guess, just clear in that area that that will help you move forward. So that's really spoke to me a lot that it's like, okay, if exercise is not a part of, of my like natural go-to thing every day, that is something that moves the needle forward. Because when I have energy and I feel good and all of that, that helps me be a better wife. It helps me be a better mom. It helps me be a letter, better Mary Kay consultant. Um, so that was one key thing that I wanted to say. Um, but the next thing that I want to talk about, it's actually from um, Dwight Eisenhower. So like former president, and it's called his priority framework. And I don't know if you've heard about this before, but this was something, like I said, I shared with Maya and Heidi this week is, is, so I want you to kind of like take a piece of paper. Okay. So like flip to your notebook to like a blank piece of paper and draw like four quadrants on it. So like align vertically, align horizontally. And so you've got four different squares. Okay. So the top left square is label that one as urgent and important. So your top left is urgent and important. Your top right is not urgent, but important. Not urgent, but important. All right, your bottom left is urgent, not important. Urgent, not important. And then your bottom right, the last quadrant is not urgent, not important. Okay. And so when he is talking about this, like, I think a lot of times our schedule, when we're looking at things, we do sometimes fall into the trap of living in that, like, that reactive state instead of the proactive state that again, like, I may be working on something, but like even this, like I'm, you know, we're doing this call, but then a text comes through that it's like, ooh, let me, you know, let me try to answer that. Or, you know, again, like the example of, of mom, like, okay, I need to, you know, I need you to do this. And so we react to things instead of truly being able to live in that proactive state. 
moving our things forward, not just reacting to what other people are throwing at us. So I'm going to share this, um, this image with you because kind of the way to look at these things. Um, so, well, before I share this, so in that, let's kind of talk about what would go in each of those quadrants. So in the urgent and important, like, what do you think would fall into that category? Like, and not necessarily specific things, but what type of things do you think would fall into that? Like in terms of Mary Kay or just in general? In general, like it can be Mary Kay, personal. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be necessarily specific kind of things, but. So like church? Church. Like, is that what you're thinking? So like, and maybe I probably, I'm trying to think of how to frame this question right. Sorry. Um, no, you, it's not you. It's not you at all. Um, type of thing. Type of thing. So like one example would be things that have like deadlines. Yeah. So like if you have something that has like a deadline that makes it, that can make it urgent mm -hmm. um, or even things that like, I mean, like emergency type of things. So like, for example, and this will kind of come together, like, but I shared with Maya and Heidi, like, again, with mom, like there was a, on a Monday last week, like I had to drop everything and go to her house. And we ended up having to call the ambulance. You know what I mean? So those type of things are emergencies. If your child gets hurt, like that is an emergency, like you have to respond to that. So those are kind of, those are kind of the things in that urgent and important that, you know, your family is obviously important. And if something happens, you do have to handle that urgently. Um, mm -hmm. So things that are are in that like clear deadline and there's a consequence if you don't take an action on it, okay? Does that make sense? Um, the not urgent but important is like things that do have a deadline um, or excuse me, things that like maybe don't have a deadline but that do bring you closer to your goals. So like Jennifer, you talked about the follow-up or like booking attempts or things like those, that those may not be urgent, but you do need to do them in order to move you closer to your goal. Okay. Um, again, they're easy to do, but they're also easy not to do. Or even, like, or even planning like what you're going to post or yeah. share. Yes. Or... Yep. Um, and then here, so let me go ahead and share this, this image with you. Okay, so like I said, in that top left that was the urgent and important, this is kind of like another word you could kind of put in there is this is like the do. So like when you're living in this quadrant, like you're doing, 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 you know, um, like this is again where you, th you know, <laughs> sometimes I even think about like when you get ready for vacation, like, and you feel like you have to do 20 gazillion things before you like leave town. It's because it's moved to that urgent because there's a deadline with it. Mm -hmm. um, the not urgent, but important is kind of your planning quadrant. And this is truly where you do want to live most of the time, because this is like your, this is your like needle moving zone. This is when you are planning. This is when you're doing the activities that, that like it says, bring you closer to your goals. Um, so again, you're, you're, you know, planning your posts, your booking attempts, your follow-up with your new team members. Um, even the like growing yourself. So like your time with the Lord, your time on pink boot camp, your time on the red hot calls, attending career conference, like all of those things that, that help move you closer to things is in this category. Um, your bottom left where it's the urgent and not important, this is the things that need to be done, but don't require you to do them. So this is again, where you're talking, Jennifer, about, you know, and we talked before about your bug list, that this is what your, you know, your assistant can do. That's what this is. There are things that need to happen, but you don't have to be the one to do them. So you can delegate them. So, you know, entering your customers into in touch that is important 
Um, but it's not, you know, there are things that you don't have to do. You know what I mean? It's all that like busy work behind the scenes kind of thing. And sometimes it's hard because it's like, okay, I don't have the energy to do something. So I'm going to do this because again, I don't really have to think about it. I'm going to do it, but that's not moving the needle forward. And then the not urgent, not important. This is where you can really kind of eliminate or delete that. It's like, what are those distractions that, that make you feel like you, you feel bad or you feel unproductive. Um, in some of these things, like, of course, the first thing, like in both of these topics that we were talking about was like, okay, watching TV or Netflix, you know, that it's like, that's okay in moderation. That's okay to say, okay, I did my work today. I'm going to watch one friend's episode, <laughs> you know, um, I'm picking on you, Maya. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Only one. Maybe those are 22 minutes long. <laughs> Um, you know, but to say, okay, you know, instead of doing my work, I'm going to binge watch an entire season, you know, of that show. Like there is a difference, you know, you know, I, I love you, Maya, with that, but, I, you know, but it's, it's that sort of thing. So yes, it's good to have, you know, some of those, those things that are just, we don't really have to think. Cause some of that does play into like, even like your day of rest that it's like, you know, it's okay but in moderation, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you've laid on the couch all day and then you were like, you are beating yourself up because you haven't done what you need to do, that's different than, you know, watching a show or a couple shows after doing a full day's worth of work, okay? So one of the things with this, and I can, I'll share this image after we're done as well, but one of the things with this is to really look at you know, look at your list of things to do, or even the things that you like you repeatedly do. You know what I mean? Like the tasks that, you know, okay, I know I always do this. Which of these categories does it fall in so that it is crystal clear when you're looking at your day and you're creating your most, your six most important things list, that if you look at your six most important things list and you're like, hmm, really these kind of fall into that delegate box. Like these are things that yes, they need to be done, but they're not the most important things for me to be doing to move me closer to my goal or to keep me in line with my priorities and my values. So where does that, like what needs to happen? What needs to shift for that? You know what I'm saying? And so again, there's gonna be things with this when you look at a day that there could be, again, Mary Kay things, there could be personal things, there could just be, you know, family things, whatever. But to figure out where these fall into, into that category, so that again, when you're looking at your things to do, and even when you're looking at your list to prioritize, like if you've got six things on your list, when you're looking at that, your things that should be your number one and number two things to do are the things that are in that those top quadrants as far as being important things to do. Does that, does that kind of make sense yeah, yeah. a little bit, Jennifer? Yeah. So would it be helpful if you're kind of like, you know, throwing out a couple of things that maybe have been on your list or that you need to do to kind of walk through like which of those categories they would fit into? Sure. My list is in the other room. <laughs> My so do you remember like just one thing that might be on that? Well, today, um, I was going to place an inventory order for myself and help my sister get hers in. She's a new recruiter. Okay. okay. So if you're looking at those two activities, so I need to place an inventory order and I need to help my new consultant place an inventory order. Which of those two things would be of higher importance or, you know, urgency, I guess you could say to be able to do. Hers versus mine. And so I can do mine any time of the day. Like it doesn't right. have to be done today. It's just something I want it to get done. Right. And so just kind of having that filter of, of knowing, and here's where this spoke to me. And this is kind of something I shared with, with Maya and Heidi is when you're looking at your list that's already done, it is kind of easier to, to decide which is more important as far as things to do. But even thinking long-term, you know, 
how this can kind of come into play is to help you think like, okay, it may not be urgent right now, but could it become urgent in the future? So let me give you an example of this. So last week, um, I like right after our leadership weekend, I had planned on doing a new product preview for my unit. And I actually was going to like pre-record the, the new, con the new product preview, um, and use a tool that I have to be able to broadcast into multiple customer groups at the same time. So it was going to go into my customer group and it was also going to go into four of my consultants customer groups at the same time. And so I had planned on recording that before we even left for leadership. That didn't happen. And then we had leadership. And then, so then I was like, you know what? I'll just do this live. Like, it's really not, a, you know, I don't mind going live. So I'll do it live and I'll still broadcast into those other groups. So that was supposed to be Monday night at eight o'clock. That was like that Monday morning, I took mom to the dermatologist um, and she ended up getting a biopsy done on a couple spots, like for some sores that she has and took her home and it was like, awesome. I'll finish getting ready, get all this together so that I'm prepared to do this live at eight o'clock tonight. About 5.30, she sends me a text that she was still bleeding like really bad from one of her spots. And so I ended up having to go up there, long story short, blood thinners and biopsies don't always mix. And so she, she was still bleeding quite a bit. And so we had to call the ambulance. She went to the emergency room. And so I was in the emergency room at eight o'clock when I was supposed to be going live. Now, where I was, was I where I needed to be? Absolutely. Like that would not have changed no matter what. But when I saw this, grid, this framework, that was the first thing that came to my mind because I had to reach out to those consultants and say, okay, I'm not able to go live at this time. We're going to have to reschedule it. You know, some of them, it worked out great. Others we kind of had to like adjust with, but that decision not only impacted me, but it impacted those consultants as well because I didn't, I mean, my thought was if I did plan like my time and schedule my time to have recorded it earlier, nobody would have even known. You know what I mean? Like that would have went off without a hitch, not a big deal at all. But so what could have been still important and still needed to be done moved me into living into that box of urgent that I felt I was in that spot of not being in a good emotional spot. You know what I mean? Because it was that I knew where I was need, I knew I was where I needed to be, but I also knew I was impacting other people. And so one of the realizations that I had is that sometimes I don't even know if, it, I don't think it's like an adrenaline thing, but what, what do I do that could have been easy to do ahead of time, but then I move into that sense of urgency to get it done. You know, it's kind of like if you know, okay, I have this party on Saturday and you could prepare for it all week long, but then you don't. And so then Friday yeah. night, you're frantic because you've got to get this stuff together. Now you've moved what could have been in that plan stage and been a simple process to prepare for. You now have moved it into that urgent box mm -hmm. and the way that you're focusing on it and the way that you're living in it is not in a good mental or emotional spot for you to live in you know and so it's like where Maya said there's not a makeup emergency there's not a Mary Kay emergency that you know you working with you know like even you helping with this new consultant order is not in the urgent category you know what I mean unless it's delayed long enough that now we're two hours before her great start deadline now it is a sense of urgency. Did it need to be that? Probably not. You know what I mean? There could be circumstances for that, but really to look in that aspect of how can I plan all of these things so that I live in that, you know, that area of the planning. I mean, that's where I love Maya's number one thing was plan to plan. You know what I mean? Because that's where we want to live. We want to live in that I'm in control. I'm not reacting to things. And you know, I can look ahead at my calendar and, you know, even to be realistic about how much time something's going to take, 
so that, you know, or one of the other things I heard too was, <clears throat> of course, it's that law that, you know, the task will expand to fill the time given to it. So if you say, okay, I'm going to take two hours to do this, it will take you two hours. But if you say, I'm going to allow 30 minutes, you can probably still get that same task done in 30 minutes instead of it taking two hours. So just, I mean, again, that whole idea of being prepared, of planning, of looking ahead. Um, and, and I think it's even the thing, like, I know we talk a lot about like taking like one day a week to plan ahead. And I think there's value in that, but also being open to where it's like, okay, maybe I can't do that. Maybe my schedule is, you know, odd enough. I need to do that every night, you know, so I can have the big things on my calendar, but like every night before I go to bed, okay, let me look ahead at the next day. Let me plan what I need to do. Let me prioritize my six most important things list. When in my day, am I going to do those things? Knowing when you have the most energy, knowing when it works into your schedule and being able to do that so that when you wake up, you know exactly what to be able to do, you know? Um, and I know it's one of those things like, I mean, cause again, this has been a topic that like Maya Heidi and I have been talking about for the last few weeks that, you know, again, it's easy to do. Like we know we, we need to be planning and we know we need to be prepared, but it's also easy not to do that planning work as well as what we should. So what are your thoughts on that, Jennifer? Yeah, yeah. Is that helpful? Or Maya and Heidi, do no, you have yeah, anything yeah. to add? I have a question. Yeah, no. Heidi, do you have yeah. a question to say? One of the things, I don't remember who told me this, but like someone taught me, and I wish I could give credit, but Mary Kay never designed our business to be in this constant state of urgency. Yeah. Because that constant state of urgency does mm -hmm. lead to burnout because it takes yeah. so mm -hmm. much energy. And that was one thing, Mary, you said about the burnout part this yeah. week. Mm -hmm. But I literally wrote down when we plan and work through the plan in which we've created to support the goal, there's just this beautiful flow. Like yes. I already am at <laughs> so much peace going into the last month of February yeah. because my plan has already been put in place. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm going mm -hmm. to do things. I am not doing anything tonight other than a 10 minute grand opening, but I'm not, I'm already ready for it. So I legit right. will hop off. I'm going to play with the kids this afternoon. Grandma Holt's mm -hmm. going to get here this afternoon. But I think sometimes we forget that. Yeah. That yeah. I never yeah. mind for this to be a company. Mm -hmm. We're in this constant state of intenseness. Yeah. Right. Right. And to like, right. I think that's why sometimes I really believe this. I believe one of the biggest reasons why women leave this company is because they don't plan. Yes. They don't exactly. Create a good schedule. Yeah. And then they think something's wrong with Mary Kay, as opposed to honey, you just didn't have any discipline with your schedule. Right. Um, right. Oh, but I, um, Heidi, go ahead. I, I yeah. Was, um, so when two things too, when Maya was talked about when I was in DIQ, I had that, um, uh, that week gone in New York city for a missions trip. And typically you don't take vacations during DIQ, but yeah. there was ease. In that. Yeah. And I remember thinking, Maya, what am I, she's like, you're going to go and we're going to plan this out. And I had so, so much peace and joy. I wasn't stressed because it was planned. And so, um, so I think that's what gave me, you know, the joy, like Maya's going to have joy today because she's planned ease. She doesn't have to have guilt for not doing something. Okay. Because it, you, she planned her work. The other thing is, and I know you all have heard this before, but Jason will say this to me sometimes, cause I'm guilty of this, but, um, somebody's lack of planning does not become your emergency. And so, um, so what's urgent to them doesn't mean it has to be urgent to you. And so sometimes my lack of planning has caused emergency, <laughs> even my Mac lack of Mary Kay planning, you know, has called emergencies in my family. And so I have to realize, okay, I didn't plan that well. So, um, so your lack of planning does not become my emergency. Um, so what that, what does that mean? I, I think one of the sales directors call said, um, someone called them on the PTO to make cupcakes or something or some sort of treat for the next day because they couldn't make it. And the national sales director, um, her daughter, remember her mom saying, you know what, I'm not going to bring that. I'm going to bring this. 
um, because it was their lack of planning that now became an emergency for all the PTO moms, right? But she knew, she's a national sales director, I'm not going to be stressed out or put my family in stress after my meeting because of their lack of planning to make this now become my emergency. Wow. So it was really powerful, that, you know, for me to hear that. And sometimes I'm like that, you know, if I don't plan my Mary Kay work, it can, it can become urgent, <laughs> you know? Wow. I am so sorry in advance for all of the stress that I have caused you for my lack of planning. My <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's very convicting. Yeah. Woo. It's convicting to me too, because I realize, you know, a lot of times I live in that urgent beat just because of juggling and because of lack of planning, you know, it's, it's not that you can't, right. it's not that you can't have two different vocations or whatever. It's just the lack of planning or executing and communicating all those things. Wow. You've been so good. And this is what, I mean, this is what I love about this is because we're all learning. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. again, it with different seasons, with different goals, with different, I mean, everybody's at a different spot that we're constantly having to adjust and refocus and, you know, kind of, and even, I mean, the thought that comes to my mind too, is even different things that are happening, take different mental and emotional energy that that may cause you to need to work differently in order to protect that. You know what I'm saying? So again, it's just that constant, like it is that grace, but even just that willingness to not be frustrated in that, but to lean into that, that it's like, okay, what, this isn't working. Let me stop. Let me pause and let me figure out what it is, you know? And even like Jennifer, with you talking about, like, you're still at that spot where, you know, some of the frustration is because that need for that assistant is still there. So again, to know that and to recognize that and to say, okay, like, I'm not gonna like abandon ship because mm -hmm. this is still bugging me, but it's like, okay, I still need to prioritize that, get that figured out because I know that what is what will help continue to push the needle forward. Right. So. Mary, I love that you said that my needle is my walk with the Lord. Like mm -hmm. not, that was really powerful. Well, and that was one of the things, like I said, as I've, as I've been doing this, like I kept on thinking, okay, my, my needle moving things have to be like, you know, 10 booking calls or whatever. And those are important, yeah. but it's also that it's, you are a whole person. You are not just mm -hmm. your Mary Kay business. And so mm -hmm. if, if I know that for me to live my life the way I need to be and to be the type of consultant, to be the type of leader, to be the type of mom that and wife that I need to be, that has to be one of the things that moves, you know, and again, if it's, if you are in that spot where that's an automatic thing, mm -hmm. then that doesn't need, you know, cause that's part of who you are, but mm -hmm. until it gets to that part, that has to be it. You know, and that's again where, you know, maybe your needle moving thing is, is exercise because again, it's, it's that whole thought, like multiple times they've talked about, like, it may not seem like it makes the difference today, mm -hmm. but if you continue not to do that, what will your life look like in 30, 60, 90 days, year, five mm -hmm. years, 10 years? Yes. If you're like, if you don't do a quiet time today that may impact your day, but if you continue not to do it for this extended period of time, that's going to make a huge difference. The same thing with your exercise and your health, you know, all of those things are just as important as probably even more important, honestly, than mm -hmm. booking calls. And I know that's probably not right to say on a, on a Mary Kay training, but again, you are a whole person. So if you're not exercising and taking care of yourself, you're not going to be around long enough to make more booking calls, mm -hmm. you know? And so like really looking at that, that whole picture of, of you and what makes you a better person and what, you know, the better you are and the more you grow, the more you'll be able to pour into your customers, your family, your team, yeah. all of those kind of things. Right. So. So good. 
That went deep. <laughs> Very good. Very powerful. Oh, yeah. Good. Wow. Awesome. All right. So Jennifer, any other thoughts or questions or things that we can do to, to, to help in regards to you looking at your schedule, your time management, your prioritizing? Did we overwhelm your brain today? Um, no, no, I am very schedule minded structure. I plan probably too much to, on some days. I don't yeah. think you can. I really don't think you can. <laughs> I don't think my husband might I say think, otherwise. <laughs> I think the only part that comes with planning that could be negative is if it has to mm -hmm. change and then mm -hmm. you're Fucked not able to just kind mm -hmm. of flow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because I think we can say planning is so important. And then to pivot within the plan. Pivot. Right. Mm -hmm. And I uh, I know we all don't mm -hmm. like that word right now. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you can pivot in just that second to do what you need to do to get the task done and then just come back tomorrow to what you already had planned, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't feel as overwhelming, right. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I, I agree with Maya. Maya is so good at pivoting and being able to pivot in the instant. Um, because that's so smart to know when you can deviate from the plan to pivot when you need to. Right. Um, I mean, that's a life skill, really, you know, things mm -hmm. are going to happen. And the thing about Mary Kay and, and working with your life, you know, is it's always going to be, there's always going to be life happening. Okay. So the, the good thing is, is that we're learning how to work our Mary Kay through our life, you know, through the life circumstances and pivoting is part of that sometimes. So you can, you can spend a lot of time planning, have the best plans laid, and then you're called in an instant to pivot. And we need to be able to do that and not just shake or, you know, falter, you know, I mean, that's the plan, <laughs> right? That's the plan. <laughs> Let's plan our pivots. Now. Well, but, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I yeah. look at, when you look at I, a common mm -hmm. denominator of someone who reaches their goals, mm -hmm. they were wise to plan. And then the second thing is if the plan didn't come into fruition, they didn't throw it up in the air. They right. were like, okay, we're going to go here. And then I'm going to follow course. And, mm -hmm. um, but wow. Well, and I think that that's where like multiple times this week, I heard the saying that planning gives you freedom mm -hmm. because then I think. I think what I see is that the more that I plan and can be, pre it's that preparedness, right. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that if I feel like, if I feel like I'm caught up or I'm ahead of the game or I'm doing what I need to be doing and something happens that I need to pivot, I react yeah. better to that than if mm -hmm. I am behind or living in that, that urgent box that's when I'm like, that's when my feathers get ruffled. That's when I start like my emotion, my, my emotions, my attitude are not the greatest because I'm in that sense of urgency that I react to it differently than if I was prepared, you know? So, I mean, again, planning is important, but I think that when you are in that zone of doing it, you're able to adjust to those those changes and those pivots in a different manner than if you're in that, that urgent zone. So. That's so good. <laughs> so good. All right. Jennifer. I love red hot oh. call. You what? I love red hot call. <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm excited to have this recording and like, we can just keep I like, know. yeah. I agree. Go back and re-listen to it. So I agree. What I'm doing right now is I'm just looking at the four quadrants and saying, honestly, self-assessment, where do I spend most of my time? And I can yes. see two quadrants. I spend majority of my time wow. yep. and that's going to help me go back and say, okay, what, what yep. do I need to change? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, and I, I, again, I think, you know, especially as, I mean, cause weekends are a lot of times when we like plan and like, you know, all that kind of stuff is to like, have this filter now of, okay, this is on my list. Which category does it fall into, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, that again, just kind of gives us like, okay, this is important, you know? And you mm -hmm. may have like things that are in that urgent box, but then to kind of have that filter that moving forward, 
things don't have to be in that they can be like planned ahead for which I think is yeah I feel like I've been living yeah I I mean I feel like I've been living probably in the urgent box too much because in the back of my mind I'm like I have to finish my car by this time or I don't get it so I mean it is a deadline right but it doesn't mean I need to live in the deadline every day right and and I think it's important I mean that's a very valid point because you are going to have seasons yeah. that are more impacted mm-hmm. by the deadline that you yeah. will have, you know, that you do. But I think you're right though. There are things that, yes, you can have that sense of urgency, but because there is the deadline, but you can still live in that planning area, mm-hmm. you know, maybe closer to that line <laughs> between the two, but, you know, and I, and this is where Jennifer, you know, watching you from the outside, I do feel like you do have a very good balance in regards to that. Um, just because, you know, you are very scheduled, you are very proactive in regards to that, that it's like, okay, I'll just wait and see what happens. And then, oh, it's the last week of February. Let me hurry up and try to, you know, recruit 10 people. You know what I mean? Like you are being very like, you know, I don't need like even cute, like you're doing what you can every single day to move that needle forward. Mm -hmm. And so I think just to, you know, be able to, to recognize that and to stay in Mm -hmm. that. Um, but that's where, again, the planning aspect of it, that it's like, okay, I know, you know, I mean, I even remember that conversation at the beginning of the month that it's like, okay, this is my goal for this month. So this is the activity that I need to do. How does that activity look like? That's, that's Mm -hmm. the marriage of all of this all together, which you've done an amazing job with. Thank you. So awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, anything else that we need to, I feel like we could probably talk for forever and ever on this. Um, mm-hmm. Anything else that we like questions or comments or anything like that? I can give you all an update where I'm at if you want. Yes. Yes. So I have signed three so far this month. So we're at nine. Um, So my, obviously my goal is to hit number 10 to hit DIQ first of March. Um, And my friend Becca is visiting me from college and she, she's from Florida and she doesn't wear makeup, but she's one of those people that approached like, Hey, if I need you one more person, will you be my one more person? And so she was asking me what my goals were yesterday. And I'm like, I need one more for DIQ. And she's like, well, do you have anybody else in mind? I'm like, there's a couple of potentials, but what about you? <laughs> and so, um, and her, name is Becca. <laughs> her name is Becca. And so I have a pile of products here on my desk. Like, cause I, she, we just came in here last night and I was just walking her through and telling her what everything she was She's like, Oh, I want that. I want that. I want that. So I'm going to take these products. She's a very numbers person. Show her what she already has outside of this. I mean, she's hosted a party. She's on skincare and be like, Hey, you can do a 225 by yourself but we can also add in a few other people. So my, my goal is to get her by the time she leaves on Monday. That's so, awesome. Yay. 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 I am so excited. I am so excited. It's happening. It's a done deal. It's already done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I am so excited. And you know, the thing is, is that you have planned your work. You have been consistent. Mm-hmm. And what happens is it's beautiful like this. It's not, a, you still have a whole week left. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. but you're going to be ahead of the schedule. You're going to be ahead of, ahead of it all. And because you plan and prepared, and then I know Maya's good at, at telling you about this. And I always pray that God blesses the work, you know, you know, mm-hmm. that I did, you know? And so once you've done everything, you've sown every seed, you pray that God to come back and bless the work that you've done. And then there'll be those things that will just pop up because you're attracting good things and you won't see it on the outside, but it's already happening. And it's just going to start to happen. It's just going to pop up in this person and this person. And so always live in the gratitude and in the faith and knowing that you're doing all that you can, and God is going to bless the work and you are doing it. You are doing it. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, and with her sister's order in today, she'll be officially finished with month two of car so uh, by like three dollars, <laughs> so um, she'll be officially finished because um, and and we found out this week she is number ten in the entire <gasps> division for Jennifer. sales, 
which we're trying to find out if she debuts on June 1st, would she be in the consultant court of sales or in director? Because I know if July. Ooh, I called. No. They yep. said director or they said consultant? Director. Dang. That sucks. Which I'm like only, I think I looked five or six grand away from being in the top 20 of director right now. Okay. Okay. So I might be able to squeak top 20 when it be quite as high as the consultant, but. But to be in the top 20 as a director, that is like, I mean. Yes. I mean, think this thought, Jennifer, through DIQ. (laughs) And then in June, when you're done, there's no cap on how much you can contribute to what you're qualifying for. So you could place the max 7,500 and finish in the top 20. Because one of the things that Amy has taught me being in the top 20 is the numbers dramatically changed the last month because a lot of people saw their month before and they think I can't make it and they give up. Right. Mm. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. We'll we'll see. So that's just what the one lady I talked to, but she had to like ask other people because I guess maybe she never had that question before. Right. So maybe I'll call and just ask again. Uh (laughs) And get it maybe in a written format. That way like, yeah, um, that, that may be a question too, Maya, to ask Nicole. I would say I'm going to message her yeah. and find out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah. So, oh my gosh, it's so exciting. Well, Melody, we know you're not here with us physically, but we are so <laughs> proud of you, my friend, yes. for finishing your very first ever red jacket. Woo! Welcome to the club. Woo! Here. Nice. You are moving in and we are so, so proud of you. Yes. Mwah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, do we want to end in prayer to go forward? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. God, I just praise you for this time that we have been able to be together. God, I know that this conversation had you in it and through it and your hands were all a part of it. God, I just pray that we, as we continue to move forward, that you would give us guidance, wisdom, and clarity about where to spend our time. God, give us peace about um, what's urgent, what's important, living in a place of um, of peace and planning, preparing. Um, Your Bible even says that a wise person plans and the foolish person (laughs) does not. And so I just pray that wisdom over us right now. God, I would pray that we would stay firm in our boundaries as we know that our relationship with you and our relationship with our family is, is absolutely crucial and vital. God, I would say for, I would pray just that we are able to really rest and recharge and we lean into a Sabbath with you that allows us to just grow our relationship with you. God, even in the midst of pursuing goals, may we not be distracted in these two important things. May we go forth with this year and just being able to grow in ways that we've never seen before, that we would just see your hand in the work and and the seeds that we're planting today. We know that this is just continuing to grow the leadership for our, our area. And we praise you already for the victories that are going to come. We love you. And we pray that this was honoring to you today. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Woo! Awesome. I don't want to go. 